Howdy folks. On the table we got something different today. This is a Lenovo Idea Center K320. I believe this is running a i5-750, so it's a first generation i5 with a GTX 770 2 gig version. Uh, this was my friend's gaming PC until I recently upgraded him. I found this in a recycle bin at one point. I believe the rear exhaust fan and the hard drive died. So I replaced the rear exhaust fan and replaced the hard drive, and the system was working fine. It came with originally a 640 gig drive, uh, 6 gigs of RAM, the aforementioned i5-750, uh, and uh, I think it was a GT210 uh, video card or an 8400GS, I forget, something very low spec. The power supply I had also replaced, we'll open up the unit in a second and see it, you can also see the Wi-Fi card that I put there. Um, the reason what I'm gonna or what I'm gonna be doing with this today is up, actually upgrading it to an Idea Center K330. This is an Idea Center K330 motherboard. Uh, a chipset. It has a 67M chipset. I think that's a P67 chipset. Uh, if I'm just not talking out of my behind right now. And there is an i7-2600 CPU installed. So the reason why I wanted to do this is um, I have a request to build a, another low-end gaming computer from another friend. So I plan on using uh, reusing this system, and I didn't want to use the first-gen i5 because it no longer, it went, in my opinion, has the minimum requirements to be a low-end gaming PC. Uh, maybe for an esports gaming PC, but he also wanted to play a few heavier titles. Um, the main reason being is that it doesn't have AVX support. So uh, I'm setting the bar for at least my systems, uh, low-end gaming systems, to have AVX support, which the Sandy Bird CPUs do. So because a lot of newer games, you can't even launch them without AVX. I mean, I don't even know how well they'll run on a GTX 770, or, is it, yeah, uh, GTX 770, but uh, yeah, at least you could actually launch it with this CPU compared to the CPU in here. And also, I really like this case. It's a pretty nice micro ATX case. Uh, it's got all this weird stuff on it, like cooling switch and stuff, and, you know, DVD drive, memory card reader. And so I'm going to go ahead and take out the old board. Um, we're going to basically reuse all the components. What I'm going to do is add a few upgrades to it, and we'll get this system, uh, I guess, somewhat well-performing in uh, 2022. We'll see what kind of games we could play on an i7-2600 and with a GTX 770. So let me go ahead and crack this system open. So as you can see, here's the inside of the system. There is our aforementioned DG, uh, GTX 770. Wow, I really got to get better at speaking on these things. Uh, I think there's a wireless PCI card down the bottom. Uh, wireless N, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, I believe, support only. About 5 gigahertz. Here's the um, stock, I guess, uh, Lenovo motherboard. That was originally, I mean, that is in the system. I have these, uh, this <laughs> EVGA. Was that a uh, hex 750b a modular power supply don't have the remaining modular cables i don't know where my friend did with them so we got what we got is what we could use and luckily there's not too much in terms of bay storage in here and i already had obviously the video leads so we should be fine to reuse that i had a uh, 180 gig ssd in here to test uh, this is the original hard drive i cloned that to the new system uh, windows 10 makes it much more easier to uh, migrate systems these days so my game plan is to basically take everything apart. Uh, I got to get the motherboard out, replace it. I want to, um, I'm probably going to sell the motherboard. We're going to reuse the same cooler. We're going to reuse the RAM. It's uh, eight gigs of DDR3 now. Um, I believe that this is, these are clocked at 1600 megahertz, but weren't obviously running at 1600 megahertz. Either that or 1333 megahertz, but we shall see. And we're going to get all the components laid out to upgrade it in on the table. So I'm going to put the camera down, my phone in this case, and we're kind of taking out all the stuff. Got most of the components laid out on the table, cleaned out the case, got the old motherboard removed. Uh, the IO shield is actually easy to take off. I have the replacement IO shield. It kind of just slides to the left and pops out. Here's our new motherboard, or I guess our used new motherboard, uh, the K330 motherboard with the i7-2600 installed. Don't know about the drive configuration. This is the original 750 gig drive. I'm probably going to use my little test SSD as the boot drive for this machine and just order a new test SSD when the time comes. There's a GTX 770 uh, CPU fan from the original system. I want to see if I can put that front panel uh, USB 3 header in this little bay area here. I don't know yet. That's going to be an experimentation. Uh, I ended up getting this uh, uh, ballistics uh, memory. Uh, I think this is crucial. 
Uh, this is 8 gigs. Uh, each module is 2 gigabytes. And because the memory on the old motherboard was only uh, uh, PC3 8500, 8, I believe. Uh, I think that's um, what, 1066 megahertz? So this is 1600 megahertz. I don't know what the speed will be, but it should be a little bit faster. And it was only seven gigs on the old, uh, the old RAM. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna include that in the motherboard when I sell that on eBay. I also have um, an Intel wireless 7265 card and uh, the USB header. Uh, this motherboard uses these custom USB jobs. I believe the pinout is just that is a normal USB port. Uh, normal USB header with a GPI uh, general purpose input output pin <laughs> on the end. So I'm also going to try it with a full around with this open uh, five and a quarter inch bay. Uh, I have this adapter here. It allows you to plug in a three and a quarter, uh, three and a half inch bay and two two and a half inch drives. So I might use that in case I can't fit the USB three header thing in there. <laughs> so descriptive. I know, right? And I'm going to also try to see if I could shoehorn this fan in here on this little curved part. I'll probably just put two screws in there and keep it there. So I'm going to go ahead, work on setting up everything, and then I'll uh, continue this video when I have everything in the case. Okay, so after a few hours, I think I am done. As you can see, we have a new motherboard installed. The heat sink moved over, reapplied thermal paste, got our 8 gigs of RAM installed, power supply all wired up to the new motherboard. I have our GTX 770 installed, 770 GTX however it goes in this generation. I'm pretty sure it's GTX 770. I have our AC wireless installed with the USB header set up. I also put the jumper pin in there. I don't know if my camera will focus in between the GP general purpose IO, GPIO pin and the ground. So hopefully that just acts as a normal USB port for Bluetooth support. Last thing I might add is a USB 3 PCIe card. Uh, but I believe that I'll drop this slot from a two uh, PCI Express 2.0 X16 to an X8 slot. So I might just leave that out and go as is. Unfortunately, there's no USB 3 native on this motherboard. And that's about it. Um, in terms of drive configuration, I ended up installing this uh, uh, 5 and a quarter inch to 3 and a half inch bay adapter. There is the original 750 gig hard drive in there. And I also have the 100 gig ADS SSD installed in the top bay. Um, those are all hooked up. All the uh, drives are hooked up to the Intel SATA controller on the board. I don't know if you can see it on their GPU there. I also have the DVD drive hooked up. I don't know if that eSATA port works or if eSATA works for DVD drives. And I'm too lazy to Google it. So I guess we're just going to have to roll with it and see what happens. And then in terms of secondary storage, there are two one terabyte drives that I found in my parts box. So we'll have a total of one, two, uh, let's call it three terabytes of storage. I'll probably put these in a RAID configuration, maybe... Um, mirroring and striping i'm not totally sure yet and obviously boot off the ssd so i'm going to call that it for today's video uh i might just <laughs> have to work on cleaning up and then i will um post as a not post but i'll add another clip to this if i get the system up and running tonight uh, otherwise i will see you next time as you can tell this is not the end of the video for forgot to also mention i did end up installing a cooling fan i kind of just screwed it down with one screw whatever I could find on that like curve metallic piece here and hooked it up to this power fan connector under here. So, I mean, that's on there pretty good and I'll give some extra airflow to the GPU because it was getting hot. I also didn't end up going with the USB front header, uh, this bay here. When I took out this like blanking cover, I can't actually fit anything in there. So, uh, there's gonna be no USB 3 front. That's it, even if I ended up adding a USB 3 card to this machine. Uh, as you can see, I have the drive hidden under there in the expansion bay. Um, but obviously, you know, that kind of nicely covers it up. Uh, the DVD drive is obviously still plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and turn the system on, and we'll see if I actually put everything together right. So, uh, And would you look at that? Sometimes I actually do things right. So the system's a little loud right now, but everything seems to be working. Uh, I haven't tested the advanced features yet, just booted the BIOS. You can see we have our i7-2600. 8 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz. All of our disk drives, we had the Intel SSD, the old 758 drives, the two 1 terabyte drives, and I guess the SATA ports do support DVD drives, or at least, I guess, in theory. So basically, <laughs> that's an interesting UAID, FFFFFF. Invalid. Oh, interesting. Okay, <laughs> so I am going to basically call this video quits for right now. Uh, next video will be installing Windows 10, updating all the drivers, and doing some benchmark. Let's see if this i7-2600 can really perform in 2022. Until then, I will see you guys next time.